All right, folks, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm going to go through a trace file that a client sent me. Their problems are that the network runs slow once in a while, wireless stuff drops off, and we don't know what to do. So I've talked a little bit about this in previous articles. So I'm going to take this step by step so you guys don't have to watch an hour video. You can just take them in chunks. In this chunk, we're going to continue from, hey, we got a big trace file. How do we handle it? First thing I did was filter out the test machine and just leave the other data. Now there's a little review. There's no span port. There's no taps or hubs. It's just plugged into any old switch port on the same VLAN as the client. I asked them to just run a trace and send it to me when they're done. And the first thing I noticed was it was a huge amount of packets. And I said, that doesn't look right. We took out the client from the trace and there's still a lot of packets in my opinion. So we want to dig in a little bit further. So the first thing uh, I did was simply went to statistics, endpoints, and there's the endpoint report from Wireshark. And because we've taken them out of the trace file, it's so much quicker to work with. Otherwise, it takes almost a minute to render these reports. And we'll just sort by packets. And you can see the very first thing is broadcast, which is not all that unusual. But I want to just see what's going on. Now, the other thing you might want to do is look at the name resolution because that gives you a lot of tips. And as soon as I do that, you can see Sonic Wall. So why is the firewall the second largest guy yapping on the network when we filtered out the client, right? So just keep that in mind, right? The client is out of the trace file. So that's a little odd. We're going to look into that in just a moment. And after I filtered on broadcast, you can see I've got all this stuff on the screen. And it just looks like random stuff, right? There's ARPs, there's um, some UDP, some LLC, all the typical garbage you see flying around a network and all that space junk. And now all of a sudden I see these UDP packets. And now what's weird about this, just to show you my train of thought and my methodology, because I want you to understand something. People have been trying to force me to give all the details of the vendors and the cards and exactly how to fix it. Don't worry about that. The chances of you having the exact same problem are not that great, right? Now, there are some scenarios where that is the case, and I will single out vendors and configs, but this is not that case. Just worry about the methodology, all right, guys? So here we are in the trace file. We got these UDP packets. What's weird? I see them coming out less than a millisecond. I've got my time set up for seconds since previously displayed packet with millisecond granularity. And you can see they're coming out pretty hot and heavy, right? And I want to find out if it's the same packet or are these just a bunch of different packets. So the first thing I did was look at view, have my packet details open. That's this bottom pane here. And there's identification and IPv4 that we can use to see if they're the same packets. I'm going to right click, apply as a filter and selected. So now we have a display filter for that IP identifier. And again, they're not, there should not be any other packets. Now, if you let this run long enough and there's a lot of data, that number will overrun. But that's not what we're seeing here. So let me just scroll up to the top here. And you can see, bang, 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 bang. These are all the same source destination IP. Let me just make this a little bit bigger for you so you can see what's going on. See? Same source, same destination, UDP, all 150 bytes, same port numbers, same IP identifier. These are the same packets. So something's going on. So what do we do? We can start digging in a little bit deeper. Now, we'll look at the first packet. We can see it's a Microsoft MAC address sending out a broadcast. Good to know. Let's look at packet number 68, the very next one. Click. Sonic Wall. See that? Same IP. Starts Microsoft, then Sonic Wall. And it's a broadcast. Now, the Sonic Wall ends with 4-0. Let's see what the next one looks like. Sonic Wall 4-0. 4-0, 4-0, 4-0. All right, so we've established the first one's from a Microsoft MAC address. The next one is from a Sonic wall. We know that it's the same IP identifier, same source IP, same destination IP. It sounds like I'm building a case in a court of law, doesn't it? <laughs> building all the evidence. Now, if we take it a step further, we can look at the first packet and look at the IP time to live. Now, that number will decrement as it traverses layer three devices, such as routers. So we start off at 128. Let's look at the next one. 127, six, Five, see that? Now, if you want to skip looking at this detail screen, we could just simply add that as a column by right clicking, apply as a column, and you see the time to live. Now you can see it clear as day. 128.765. I'm going to turn off this bottom pane for a moment just to show you. This is just going on and on and on and on. 
and on until it finally ends up as one, right? And the next one is zero, obviously. So this is an example of the client sending out a broadcast. And next thing I know, and please pay attention to how I phrase this. The next packet is from the sonic wall and it's a broadcast. And the one after that's from the sonic wall. I'm not saying the sonic wall is causing all this, but he's the last one who touched it because there could be somebody else along the way mucking with it and then the sonic wall sees it and then spits it out. So we don't know that yet, right? We know it's not a layer three device getting involved because the time to live goes down by one. If there was another layer three device involved, like a router, then that time to live would have gone 128, 126, 124, and so on and so on and so on. So, so far, and again, this is, this is the art of protocol analysis. We're just taking a look, taking a snapshot, making a baseline, and so far the baseline says, Computer sends out packet, and then the sonic wall is the last guy who touched it, and it flies around, in this case, 128 times. And if you take a look here on the bottom, it says displayed 128, because we have a filter for that IP identifier, right? So now that we know that, I'll show you a little trick. I'm going to go to View, Packet Details. Again, in this IP header, I'm going to select this IP time to live, because the chances of having a packet with an IP time to live of 116, for example, is fairly, fairly small. Usually they start to like 32, 64, 128, that sort of thing. In this case, it says 116. I've randomly picked something other than 128. So let's pick 116. Watch this. Right click. Apply that as a filter. Select it. And we'll see how many other packets have a time to live of 116. And you can see them all. These are all broadcasts, all from different IPs. See that? I bet you if we pick one, uh, I'm doing all this on the fly, by the way. So <laughs> let's see if this works. Pick another random IP, uh, 64. Let's pick this one, 85, right? That's different. And I'm going to go over to the IP identifier again. Right click, applies filter, and select it. And let's see if we see the same pattern. And sure enough, we do. 128.765.432, ba, ba, ba. And if we take a look at the source, the MAC address is Dell this time, before it was Microsoft. It's a broadcast. And the very next one, bang, sonic wall again, 4-0. You see that? So we've proved this is not an isolated incident. We've proven that it's a broadcast packets that are being affected. Again, the last guy who touched it is the sonic wall, right? So that, all that tells us is the next test would be to take another trace, ideally from the sonic wall port, to see if anybody is sending it to him and he's sending it around, or if he, in fact, sees the original packet and then spits it out. So I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes. We're about the eight minute mark, that's good. So I'm gonna take the next step as another video. I hope that helped, and I hope the little tips and tricks make your troubleshooting just a little bit more easier. Have a good day, bye for now.